The planets above us are some of our greatest teachers, and this week, their lessons look like trusting in a higher plan, understanding that there is a higher will to everything, and embracing the inevitable divine detours. Hello everyone, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria, and for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. This week, the energy of the planets is unfolding around us, and it does look like a huge trust fall. I'm gonna dive into every single aspect of this week from the smaller, more intimate transits to the full moon that's happening in the sign of Gemini at the start of the week, November 27th. So grab some hot coffee, grab some tea, grab some water, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my loves, welcome back. So I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm gonna be doing a little bit of shuffling while we address the astrological transits, the move of these planets. Hopefully it won't be too irritating, the sound of the shuffling, and some of you guys actually find it relaxing. I'm hoping for the latter. So first things first, as you guys know, I really love to take a few steps back before I take a few steps forward and talk about what we are in the thick of right now. The reason why I like to do that is because it will catch everyone up, new and old friends to the YouTube channel, so that we're all on the same wavelength, on the same page. One of the major transits that has been creating a lot of um, obvious energy changes and shifts is the fact that Mars is squaring off currently with Saturn. Now, Saturn is the planet that rules a lot of our challenges and the feeling of opposition. If, you, if we're coming from a higher perspective and we're open-minded, optimistic even, or if we have higher awareness, we can look at Saturn as this great teacher, this great planet that is very involved in our lives, that is teaching us to become the greater version of ourselves. But with that means that we are going to have to be committed. We are going to be devoted. And we are going to have to honor those commitments within ourselves, but also whatever the lesson is, it doesn't look like it's gonna be letting up anytime soon. And with that, it can be exhausting, it can be draining, it can also be defeating. Saturn's intention is not to break your spirit, break your heart, or frustrate you to the point where you lose your faith or lose hope. If anything, it's teaching you weak spots in your life or weak sp spots in your mentality to break that down so that it can be rebuilt so that whatever that mindset is that Saturn sees as a problem will be a firm foundation for the remainder of your future. And it'll take many, 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 many years before you would have to revisit and rekindle that which it broke down because whatever it rebuilt from breaking it down is something that is stable and secure. This can look like your self-esteem. This can look like your relationships. It can look like your money, your spending, your finances, resources. Every single aspect of your life is easily could be influenced by Saturn. Specifically, you want to look to see what Saturn, where Saturn is transiting in your current chart, in your natal chart. So Saturn right now is in the sign of Pisces newly and squaring off with Mars, the planet that rules our action, how we pursue our goals, what we chase after and how we chase chase things is now transiting through the sign of Sagittarius and squaring off with Saturn. This can create a lot of frustration for many of you in the grand scheme of things. This can look like this idealistic vision and hope that you have for your future, for your life. It feels like it can be so far away or it feels like, how do I get to that? Like, how do I get to this ultimate dream? How do I get to this feeling that it is that I have within my soul and spirit? Where can I find it? Mars, I want you to know at the time for this week, for every single one of us is very much like searching. It's searching for answers. It's looking for freedom. It's looking to expand. It's looking to explore. And when Saturn steps forward in the sign of Pisces, it's kind of pulling Saturn, I'm sorry, kind of pulling Mars back in, 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 a, in a kind of way, I don't know another way to say that, it can 
make it can awaken this feeling of frustration that bubbles up or it could be anger or it could be self-sabotage everyone again is different depending on your personal natal chart so this was something that has already been building and brewing since the 25th of last week i'm wondering how you are feeling this energy at the start of this week and how this will unfold for you as the week continues to um unfold also have you had any revelations last week and into this week so please keep us posted down in the comments below let us know how this is impacting you impact impacting you i don't know why i'm so tongue-tied today probably because mercury retrograde is about to happen and i'm so ruled by mercury that is not going to happen until december for wait no it's not december 6th so uh feeling it now clearly obviously but what is your rising sign um are you feeling this this square between mars and saturn also not is this isn't going to just be felt in our intimate lives we're also going to see this globally with outbursts of anger frustration agitation and it can create really crazy wild accidents now i know you guys probably remember me talking to you about the red zones of the cities i'm not going to get too deeper into that in this video simply because i don't necessarily want to put too many trigger warnings i would probably revisit that and kind of look at how the week unfolded from last week we're still in the midst of that just like how i said in that video that there's uh higher higher prone to accidents like this is a week where the acts where i am very tongue-tied right now where we are very accident prone that still is under we're still under the influence of that <laughs> as we speak not only do we have the activity and the agitation of mars going off with saturn but we also have mercury disillusioned by neptune neptune has been retrograde will be moving direct finally um when will neptune be moving direct i know this because i just wrote it down okay actually the six the six i'm sorry guys wow i'm must be under the influence of my tea right now so december 6th is actually when neptune goes direct mercury retrograde is december 13th girl pray for me <laughs> clearly i can feel it the tea that it is that i'm drinking by the way it's actually i turned it into an iced tea it's chamomile lavender and it's raining right now and i'm just super cozy and like cozy vibes as you can see i'm wearing my hufflepuff um hoodie my well it's not a hoodie it's a long sleeve shirt um what by the way what house are you have you guys ever been sorted in uh harry potter <laughs> distracted okay moving forward though those are the dates i'll link them down below in the comments so that you can keep up because i can imagine that this is like bouncing you around a little bit anyway mercury squaring off with neptune can create a lot of mental confusion which i'm feeling right now it can create a lot of mental confusion tongue-tied misunderstandings communication just gets weird wobbly and remember Mer um, neptune is currently retrograde and will be moving direct on december 6th so in the sign of pisces and influencing mercury mercury rules our mind communication those energies just get really muddled and mixed up kind of like the conversation that is that i'm having with you guys today right now it's kind of like what um the best thing that i would do with these transits is i don't want to say to hunker down and hunker in but i would practice a lot of grounding exercises i would try to maintain healthy boundaries and this can look different per person, right? So this means that we're not absorbing the energies of other people, that we are not overexposing ourselves to the thoughts, the opinions, the voice, the eyes of others. We're looking after ourselves where if you need to go hermit mode, that can be a good thing. Also here, boundaries and expectations. That's another thing too that's been very highlighted, especially when it comes to relationships with Venus transiting through the sign of Libra. There's a need to kind of people please or to show up in all these different ways, but is it realistic? Are you, oh goodness, I just heard the word performative. For someone here, they or someone else may seem like that they're showing up and going big and someone that you can count on. 
I do want to say that watch how, watch actions. Do the actions actually allow that person to show up in full or is it all words, all talk? Now, remember again, Mercury squaring off with Neptune can be really tricky and Mars squaring off with Saturn represents our actions, not our words. Neptune squaring off with uh, Mercury would be our words. So clearly there's a miss that's happening in the astrological skies when it comes to what it is that we can realistically expect from other people. And to be honest, it can look like you can feel a little let down. Now, I do want to say that intentions seem to be pretty pure for most people here. It's more about there's an like obligation or sense of duty that is holding this person back or holding you back from being able to follow through with your word. So that then leads me to the next word that I actually wrote down in my notes for this week ahead. Um, the word was integrity, believe it or not. This is where your words and your actions, they match. Your words and your thoughts, they match. They're moving with integrity. So Sometimes when we or someone else is not moving with integrity, it's not that they don't want to. It's just that there might be, again, certain obligations or sense of duty or things that are hindering them from showing up. But at the end of the day, if you can't follow through with your word, if you can't follow through with your promises, then you are not moving with integrity. If you are saying that you want something or that you like something or you don't like something and you do or you don't, like how you actually feel about that is other other than what it is that you're saying, you're not moving with integrity. So that's not to trigger anyone, to agitate anyone, especially with these types of planets, transits with what's going on with the planets right now. Um, my intention is not to irritate and agitate. It's to kind of shine a light on astrologically what is that the planets are showing right now, which is let's look at how our relationships, partnerships, friendships, are they moving with integrity and are we showing up with that same? If not, then we have to adjust our boundaries accordingly. And do you know that with Pisces retrograde and then now soon, December 6th, moving direct, we're going to have to adjust our boundaries according to where our energy is at right now, okay? Because it changes and evolves. So with this, I want to tell you that this is going to take some time. This week specifically, we have the influence of the full moon happening in the sign of Gemini, right? So this is going to really light up. Okay, cool. This is really going to light up um, conversation, communication, expectations, explorations, a lot of shuns there. So full moon, so there's that, but also full moon's are very very emotionally charged times they can be very difficult and tough to navigate through if we were to think about um our willpower as a boat and our intention as the wind and the sails of that boat the full moon would look like a storm that our boat is trying to navigate through. So knowing that this is a wonderful time to reflect as much as possible or in a way that feels good for you to reflect on any type of boundary settings, expectations, what it is that you want and need for yourself? What is it that is, um, I don't want to say honorable, but because that, but that's the word that's actually coming through. The word is honorable. And I actually feel like writing that down for some reason. We might need to expound on that word a little bit more honorable that that feels like an intuitive message something's about to download i'm about to seriously download with that that word honorable but um spirit is, is saying that for right now uh what uh what do you want what do you need what are your expectations and what is realistic for you to deliver for you to do for what you want to do for you if there's certain things that certain promises that you may need to break or certain things that you don't need to show up for that you do need to show up for, it's time to kind of reassess that ske your schedule and make a game plan that actually works for you. Do know that this can trigger some disappointment and agitation in other people, but at the end of the day, that word that was coming through was integrity. So if that means that we may have to disappoint people, 
I think that being someone who is honest about what can be expected is more helpful than trying and then ultimately having the energy lead to disappointment at the end of the day. So let that also be something that you are receiving. I do want to let you guys know that in the far future, and then we'll talk, we're going to dive into the full moon in Gemini, but in the far future, roughly around the new moon, that's going to be December 12th and December 13th, Mark, Mercury's going to go retrograde. So of that week, December 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, that week, there's going to seem to be some type of newness that's going to be coming in like a breath of fresh air. I can shuffle a little bit further on that. I really intuitively am getting a sense of that. It could also be triggered by the new moon that's happening in the sign of Sagittarius. The reason why I feel called to bring it up for you now is because um, I feel like this reassessment of boundaries, expectations, and your goals, and the brief um it's not doesn't feel very ref, uh relaxing it could be but it feels very reflective the word is reflective this time that you're using for this week to kind of gather and organize and recenter and ground yourself and reestablish your role your identity your expectations all the things that we we're talking about before is going to lead to the breakthroughs that are going to be felt around december 12th 13th and to the latest, the 15th, 16th is what I'm hearing. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and shuffle and see what else we have going on here. December 1st, Mercury will be entering into the sign of Capricorn, by the way. This is going to uh, solidify all of those dreams, visions, hopes, idealistic um, expectations, like things that is that you could only hope for for your future. I believe that when Mercury was transiting through the sign of Sagittarius, which was the last few weeks, there might have been some poking around of conversations of something that it is that you want for yourself, that you see for yourself, for your future. When Mercury enters into the sign of uh, Capricorn, that's going to be December 1st, those conversations are going to solidify even further. I believe that they will solidify enough that before the end of this year a concrete plan would be made about the this um hope so let's say okay some of you guys are probably like lost by what is it i'm saying so this could be let me go ahead and give you an example this could be someone who has explored different job opportunities or explored different avenues for monetary growth or business growth and we're putting out a lot of feelers something catches something bites around December third around December 13th it's not a bite it's a a con like an actual physical tangible evidence that this is cementing like this is working this could be you starting the job this could be you showing up this could be the date this could be the plan and then a little further on later on down the line you're in that role before the end of the year and it's you have a general good idea of what it is that you can expect from this new thing that started when you started putting feelers out i hope that makes sense all of this has a lot to do with um mercury's transit through sagittarius capricorn uh, and then ultimately aquarius and then pisces so just to keep your eyes um, open for that Okay, I hope this makes sense. Also keep in mind, though, that there's there is a little bit of a delay with um, Mercury going retrograde. So but that's gonna be good. Mercury retrograde is going to be happening December 13th. So go ahead and put that on your calendars. And what this will do is allow you to investigate different um, other opportunities or options that may be well for you or even to revisit and to poke once again on that old conversation, that old idea, that vision that is that you had. And when it moves direct again after that, then you'll start to see more concrete evidence. So there is a little bit of a back and forth, but either way, if you put your foot on the gas and you're not hitting the gas all the way, you're gonna see some movement. There will be some moments where you kind of have to hit the brakes or tap on it or drive slow, but at least you know what to expect when it comes to this vision, this goal that is that you're working towards. Now, for some of you guys who are like, Jess, I need more specifics. To be honest with you, always honest with you, I will never come on and promise you directly where it is that this is going to fall within your chart. 
Why? Because my YouTube channel has over 200,000 people and every single one of your charts are different naturally, right? Obviously. So I don't want to mislead those 200,000 and tell them this is exactly where it is that you can find it. To some extent, it will be a little general unless I was looking directly at your chart. And for right now, my books are completely closed for the remainder of the year while I'm catching up on readings, okay? So, um, but I will tell you, I would look to see mostly, if I were you, I would look to see where Mercury's transiting within my chart, but I would also look to see the full moon, the full moon, December 27th, the sign of Gemini, and what is your rising sign? If you let me know down in the comments what your rising sign is, I will be able to pick up and kind of give you a general, a closer idea of where these transits will be impacting you, okay? Um, also, if you would like to keep an eye out for future readings and the apothecary reopening and restocks, that would be um, available for you at bahadilife.com. I would sign up for the newsletter. I'll make it available for you guys right now. Let me make a note of that before I forget. Um, yeah, you can have instant notifications of when the apothecary reopens. The apothecary just reopened a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and it's going to be reopening shortly. So I would look out for that. Let's go ahead and look into, if you don't mind, the full moon that's happening in the sign of Gemini. Of course, I have the chart pulled up. I'm actually using it to um, unravel the, the other energies of this week. First things first, Gemini energy can be a little frazzled, typically, when it's a full moon. So that's something to look out for. I just heard the word, intuitively, I just heard the word partial. So this is letting me know right now that there might be something that feels a little half-assed or half in half out non-committal flaky which kind of does ring true to gemini energy oftentimes it does give a little bit of disappointment and sense of defeat frustration this may be from another this feels like someone else's energy or you your energy with someone else when it comes to I don't know if this is fulfilled promises or hopes for the future and what that can look like. It feels like it feels like people are just on two different pages. Um, looking at the chart right now at the full moon in the sign of Gemini, Saturn scoring off with the moon is a natural depressant. It's energy that can feel very sobering or emotions that can feel very sobering. Gemini energy does feel like a shot of espresso oftentimes. So I feel like, and with this full moon particularly, the Mar Mars is directly opposite, um, sitting almost directly conjunct the sun and directly opposite the, the full moon itself. So, or the moon itself. And Mars is then squaring off with Saturn. So it's tough. Mercury squaring off with uh, Neptune. This is either missed expectations lost in translation moments, people just being on different wavelengths, different pages. It can feel a bit dis disappointing and defeating if you're trying to build the rest of your life upon this full moon. Some people do do that. Does this mean that you shouldn't be setting intentions? No, absolutely use the, the, the moon always to set intentions if that's something that you're working towards. There's no curse when it comes to praying and setting intentions unless you have bad feelings and you don't feel comfortable when you're setting intentions or you're setting prayer, saying your prayers and of course. But so don't let me, don't misunderstand. I am just really struggling, guys. Go ahead and hit this video and give it a thumbs up to support me through this, <laughs> through this video. I, I wanna be here. I just am very tongue tied. It's like my, my brain and my tongue are not connected. There's like a miswiring. <laughs> it's so weird, but I'm okay with it. This is one of those t full moons too that, you know, it's good to try to take naps and to slow down. If anything, I'm clearly feeling the influence of these, <laughs> of these planets already, even though this is further down. Actually, no, the full moon is tomorrow. Yeah, see, that makes sense. <sighs> Yeah, I guess we're just going to do our best today. I even, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I've actually was considering even stopping halfway through this video, which I was like, should I just start over? And I'm just like, nah, I just, 
I need you guys to see me at when I'm at my best and I need you guys also to see me when I'm stumbling through it like a cart with a crooked wheel rolling over rocks that's kind of the vibe this afternoon so go ahead and give this video a thumbs up to show love and support because I am not ever gonna hide <laughs> I, my intention is not to hide my intention is to move with integrity so you know that the struggle can be real sometimes okay you guys know I'll always keep it a buck 100 with you uh what was I talking about oh the full moon in Gemini let me let me do shuffle and see what's going on with this energy too it's interesting because we have the five of pentacles that showed up in the three of cups five of wands this right away feels like um adjustment shifts tension conflict that doesn't necessarily look negative it could actually feel like positive it can feel like someone challenging you competition but it just doesn't feel constructive. I do want to say that recently, yesterday, I was channeling like crazy. So maybe that's why I'm a little tongue-tied today. Um, I was channeling like really um, interesting energies when it comes to friendships, community. And I will link that video down below. So I probably check in on that. It's almost as if this full moon might be highlighting or like not exalting, but bringing it up, like really bringing it up and out. So you have to see this energy of competition with someone. If it's not that someone is competing with you, it's almost as if the energy feels like someone just moving around is kind of stepping on your toes or you're doing it to them or you guys are doing it to each other. So I would keep an eye out for that. It also, look at that, three of swords. Like to confirm right away, that's the card of heartache. Okay, it doesn't want to focus. This is the card of heartache, disappointment, dissatisfaction, sadness, it doesn't feel intentional, but it feels like it's, it's, it's happening. It feels like it's happening even though it's not intentional. It feels like someone who is, think about someone who is naturally like athletic and they're moving around really fast and they knock things over and you are sensitive and it's just agitation. So that's kind of the energy that this full moon is bringing. It almost feels like it would be difficult for you to hold your tongue to be patient because this energy does feel very, gah, like it feels very espresso shoddy, you know? So I would look out for that. Relationships though, if I was going to work with this full moon in any capacity, I know that I just said that this is the transits, how they're unfolding currently, but I do believe that this is a wonderful time to manifest love and relationships soulmate connections, union, partnership, and relationships that can get through relationships that are based upon like a friendship level. So they just have that regardless, you're able to laugh through the hard times. I really, really, really see that. I'll actually open up my books for um, love spells and love, uh, love fix candles. I was just looking to see if I have any, uh, I have like minimum, but I'll open them up if you guys want love fix candles for jesus i'm struggling candles for love and romance manifesting that as well as oils in order to manifest as well oh side note this is a wonderful time to tell you guys that i i will have a christmas blend that i've been working on very quietly the lot like i literally started like four weeks ago i'm not even kidding i am ready for the holidays so there's a christmas blend that's gonna be opening up but that will be announced in the shop update but just so you know for those of you guys that are here you're definitely getting a heads up on that let me go ahead and shuffle a little further on this full moon and gemini type of energy if i was going to manifest anything further with this i would definitely ask for clarity and um discernment when it comes to my spiritual and prophetic visions that's something else that i've been seeing here within the chart is enhancing your spiritual gifts also mentorship when it comes to your spiritual studies gifts or spirit guides this could be something that really is helpful for you as manifesting partnership when it comes to the spiritual realms i would be i would ask my angels and my guides my ancestors not mine but yours I would ask them for help when it comes to those types of connections that will help you from the spiritual realms. Also, this is another wonderful time to set intentions when it comes to friendship, connection, and community. Not only is that showing up in the intuitive visions, look at that. Yeah, not only is it showing up, let me just tap this. Boop. Not only is it showing up in my intuitive visions lately, let's see if it'll focus. 
there you go not only is it showing up in my intuitive visions but i'm also seeing it within the astrological charts let me know if that's something that you guys have been thinking about if so give this video a thumbs up and or leave a heart down below in the comments um i do want to tell you that there's some things that this full moon is going to tell you that this relationship friendship connection is something that it's time for you to walk away from it, it truly is you have the eight of cups here and the joker card that's confirming the fact that that energy is going to be felt at the full moon do you know that the full moon will highlight and exalt and put in your face really um energies that you just shouldn't and can't be working with any further any longer and i know that, that can be a difficult task but Chiron retrograde right now. Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries is really trying to teach so many of us. And Venus directly opposing the North Node. Also in Aries. Venus sitting in the sign of Libra, highlighting relationships and partnerships. It's making you kind of assess partnership, but at what cost? Or it's making you fix heal damage that has already occurred in some of your most important relationships it's also making you assess how to heal your current uh relationship dynamic starting within yourself first and how that pours out into others if you don't love yourself fully it's very difficult to have healthy boundaries when it comes to others because you'll find that you're you cut people off you could be irritable anger angry or you overextend yourself, making everyone else's life super easily, eff super easy and effortless to the detriment of your own. When Venus is transiting through the sign of Libra and the North Node and Chiron retrograde are in the sign of Aries, this can really, really amplify how you love yourself, how you feel about yourself, and how that influences your relationships. Side note, ADD just is kicking in. I knew it. I knew my chair was low. Look at that. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm perched up. Wow. Okay, one last card and I'm going to let you guys go because cl clearly I'm Captain Chaos this afternoon. On the boat adrift in the ocean of infinite potential of thoughts and <laughs> thoughts and conversations, girl. It's a whole the whole vibe. Thankfully, my house is organized and clean, which I just really, really love that. That was tough. Oh, how was like, how was your holiday, by the way? Mine was good. I don't, for those of you guys that don't know, I entertained about 15, 16, 17 people at my place. And it was awesome. I made collard greens, mac and cheese, and ribs, like crown, crown, like pork crown ribs. Everyone loved it. And a lot of the food that was brought was good and there were so many different cultures that we were eating from so cool very awesome and we just went into the night and we were just relaxing hanging out talking it was it was great it was definitely a vibe so i uh, definitely wanted to hear how you guys' thanksgiving was i i saw as the week was unfolding i was getting comments like jess i should have listened to you like my friend and my family or blah 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 actually <laughs> I, do, I should, probably shouldn't put this on the internet, but now that I'm saying it and looking back, I had a moment too where I was like, what is this? Like this feeling of like, not with the people that were around me, but I had like a little emotional um, triggerization moment that I had to like really quickly kind of get through process and then get through it. Not because of what anybody else was doing around me, but it was definitely the influence of Mars squaring off with Saturn. I had to get through it though real quick and bounce right back. So I did see some comments from you guys saying that there was like someone I saw had a fight, a fist fight with their uncle, <laughs> not them. I don't mean to laugh. I'm so sorry. Um, but, but it's so relatable, right? Like just families, just family get together, just be doing the most. But someone's uncle got into a fist fight and there was a few other fights and arguments that were going on at the table. And they were just like, I should have stayed at home. Yeah, girl, I hear you. But sometimes it's good to be in it and to and when it happens like i would rather like i don't of course i don't want to see my family fighting or like my predictions when there's like anger or violence or agitation of course i don't like when that happens but at least we know what to expect so when it does happen you can almost sit back and like sip your tea and just kind of watch it and then politely politely and respectfully excuse yourself and then you go home you watch a movie you hang out you watch my videos you know what i mean like it's just kind of better it's better that way 
So I don't want, I never, 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 never want anyone to come to listen to my videos and then, you know, shutter themselves off away from the world. Like I never, I never, when you know that there's conflict or that you know that the energy is positive, you know what to expect for good or for bad or the in between. So anyway, so that's how my Thanksgiving was. Let me know how your Thanksgiving was. Um, did you guys cook? And did you clean up afterwards? No judgment, no judgment. Cause I actually didn't think that I was gonna be able to clean up. I actually thought that my mess, my house was gonna be a mess for a minute, but it actually isn't. I had some, I had a lot of help afterwards cleaning up and that was a huge game changer for me. We have redirected conversation, but I'm sure you guys are chill. For those of you guys that are old friends and family, you already know that we kind of have little side conversations here. So let me know. And do you have leftovers? We we do, but not for long, not for long. And we had so much pie, like so much pie. If you can look up um, pumpkin chiffon pie, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. Mm, it is so good. I love pumpkin pie. Also, we have apple pie too. We have so many pies. We have cakes. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but my partner, he um, he's a restaurant owner and he owns an, an ice cream shop, like a creamery, and they sell like desserts and cakes. It's just the best. And um, they brought ice cream, cinnamon. They brought cinnamon ice cream, pumpkin cobbler, which I was like, for a minute, I was like, what even is pumpkin cobbler? Right? Like I've heard of like apple cobbler, but, or peach cobbler. I've never heard of pumpkin cobbler. It had me st stunned for a minute. And I was just like, like, what is that? So good. Oh my God. Duh. <laughs> so good. Um, and then what else? Oh, and then we had like traditional vanilla. And then there's this one called, um, this one's my boyfriend's favorite. It's coffee and cookies. And every time, it's so cute. Every time where he goes into the, into the store, he'll be like, mm, let me try. And he always gets the same thing. Always tries the same thing. Always try as if he's never had it before. We have a whole tub of it, a quart size of it in, in the fridge as we speak. I wish I could share it with you guys, girls. It was so good. Oh my God. So we have, right now we have more pies and cakes than we do proteins and, you know, mac and cheese, mostly because we've been destroying those leftovers. Um, wow. I wish you guys were here that we could just like all sit down and just cut a slice and just destroy these leftovers and move forward. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah okay so any last words or things that is that we need to say i think that's pretty much it um thank you guys so much for hanging out with me let me just shuffle one more card and i'll let you guys go i do want to say that the four of pentacles did show up i love how my cards my camera focuses for six like not even half of a second i was gonna say 16 seconds but it's not even 16 seconds it focuses for like half of a second and then it loses its focus that is so relatable. <laughs> My camera and I are the same person. Okay, so we have seven of wands, six of pentacles, five of swords, see that right there, nine of wands, yes. Yes, seven of wands, nine of wands, that combination right there, five of, five of swords, that right there. This is going already showing me, there's this energy, there's this tension. I might need to kind of like look into this a little further. I might do a separate reading and post it up on here on the website. I'm sorry, on the Hottie Life YouTube. But there is there is this lingering um, tension when it comes to friendships. I don't know who this is. I don't know what's going on in the mix. Community, the vibe, the tribe, it feels a little off. I talked about this and I have another video that's gonna be posting up, so keep your eyes open for that the second part but the first part is up right now and it has everything to do with um like the evil eye it's like someone who is just callous they're not really it's like someone who doesn't watch where they're going and they step on toes and they don't care when they apologize it feels very short and cold it doesn't feel authentic and true it doesn't feel like they genuinely care but then they show up and they do it again and it's just this energy is still showing up here. Seven of Wands is the card of stress and like trying, well, it's the card of being caught off guard and it's stressing you out. Nine of Wands is the card of when you are already stressed out, but you don't have it in you to back down, you still keep showing up. 
Five of Swords is the card of I'm hurting you, you're hurting me, we're hurting each other. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? And Six of Pentacles showing up is the card in give and take. So this might have to do with someone, a Three of Wands, it could be someone watching from afar, from a distance, kind of looking into your life. Evil Eye has been a lot lately. Don't even get me started. If this, if I was going to use this full moon for anything else too, it would be to protect from the Evil Eye. <clears throat> Let's see. I have a um, <clears throat> a new oil called Protect Your Peace. I might list that one. It actually sold out as soon as I opened it up, but I'll make some more for you guys probably under the light of the new moon. I'm sorry, full moon. Uh, yeah. Do you guys need a full moon oil, by the way, or can I just, should I just focus on the Protect Your Peace? Anyway, this these are the energies. Yeah. Trust your energy. Trust your vibes. Don't second guess yourself. Also, make sure that you are someone who is not adding to the chaos that is being, that I'm picking up on right now. Okay. I feel like at some point we all, it happens, you know, at some point it happens. I can think of a moment off the top of my head where I am queen of chaos and am not adding to a functional society. <laughs> <laughs> like just dysfunctional, dysfunctional as hell, working on it. Um, just adding frustration for no, for no reason. And uh, that's just me being honest. So I can use this full moon to kind of reflect on that and just be like, you know what, Jess, you could do better. And if you can't, then sit your ass down and wait till the moment that you can, you know, journal about it, <laughs> get it out. <laughs> Difficult for no reason. So that's a me thing. I wonder if you guys can relate to that as well. And I'm only saying that and putting myself out there first because this is A, a safe place, a sacred place, kind of. And um, judgment-free zone. And if you're going to judge me, I don't care anymore. It's not like I'm going to put anything. I would not say anything that would be even worth, you know, judging here on the YouTube channel. I keep my skeletons deep in the closet <laughs> and in the attic and in the basement and in the backwoods of the swamps of Louisiana. <laughs> Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will see you guys in my next video. I hope that you are well. Do subscribe to this YouTube channel so that we can hang out again. And if not, and you were hanging out with me for the entirety of this video and for this time that is that we're spending together, thank you. You're not obligated to stay here. You're not committed. We don't have to be in a committed relationship, but if you want to be, in a committed um, internet relationship, which sounds really weird. And um, that's not me adding any f fucking petroleum gel, like petroleum, what is it? Uh, gasoline to the fire of any type of stalkerous energies out there. Cause I am not trying to invite that energy in. Um, lost my train of thought as I was saying it. Um, yeah. So loving you guys, please feel free to subscribe. If you'd like to give this video a thumbs up, if it was helpful for you and feel free to stick around because of course I would love to shuffle and pull cards for you and charts for you in the near future. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next one. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.